Studies show that about 1 in 10 women in India may be suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome commonly known as PCOS which comes with a range of symptoms and risk factors. Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Sumi Sukanya Datta and in this special broadcast I will talk about PCOS, what are its symptoms, what could be the trigger factors and existing and the new treatment options for the condition. PCOS is a hormonal disorder that affects women of reproductive age and may trigger a range of symptoms. The exact root causes of the symptoms are not known, but it arises when the ovaries produce an excess of androgens or male sex hormones typically found in smaller amounts in women. Doctors who spoke to the print claim that the prevalence of PCOS in India seems to be increasing. According to Dr. Mahesh Chauhan, consultant endocrinologist with Apollo Hospitals in Navi, Mumbai, the incidence of PCOS is 10% or more in India and it's growing, depending on which criteria is used. His estimate about the prevalence of PCOS reflects the findings of a 2022 meta-analysis of 11 systemic reviews on the condition. This analysis, published in the Open Access Curious Journal of Medical Science, found that the prevalence of PCOS is 11.34% in India. This estimate accounts for the two out of three symptoms falling under the Rotterdam criteria. This criteria uses the most commonly used diagnostic tool for PCOS, oligoanovulation or 8 or fewer periods every year, hyperandrogenism or excess production of male hormones and polycystic ovaries in which there are small sacs of fluids in ovaries. The number of women seeking medical help for PCOS symptoms is steadily increasing and according to Mumbai-based Dr. Gayatri Deshpande, nearly 25-30% to 30 of her patients are diagnosed with PCOS. She said that the condition is common among women of reproductive age. Most of the patients complain of irregular periods, excessive hair growth, acne, weight gain or difficulty losing weight. Some women also experience thinning hair, dark patches on the skin and the development of skin tags. Dr. Deshpande said that the severity of PCOS varies significantly from patient to patient. At one end of the spectrum, there may be women who present mild irregularities in their menstrual cycle, perhaps every 45 to 60 days, while at the other extreme, there are patients who have extended menstrual intervals of up to 6 months to a year, she said. A commonly associated symptoms can also vary in intensity, including acne and facial hair growth. More seriously, if left unmanaged, PCOS can lead to serious health complications such as type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, endometrial cancer. It may also affect fertility and increase the risk of miscarriage. While the term PCOS and PCOD or polycystic ovarian diseases are sometimes used interchangeably, PCOS is a more complex and severe endocrine disorder. PCOD in which ovaries start releasing immature eggs that lead to hormonal imbalances is often addressed by lifestyle changes but PCOS usually requires the use of external hormones for effective management. The apparent increase in the incidence of PCOS could be linked to lifestyle factors such as sedentary behavior, unhealthy dietary patterns and stress said several medical experts who spoke to the print. Dr. Duru Shah, founder president of the PCO Society of India says that only 5 to 10 percent cases of PCOS are genetically transmitted from mother to her daughter. On the other hand, majority of the disease is due to epigenetic changes such as imbalance of hormones which have not been corrected, exposure to various environmental pollutants and obesity. Also, nearly 50 to 80 percent of PCOS patients are either overweight or have obesity. Desh Pandey added that being overweight seemed to contribute more severe symptoms in PCOS patients, especially in women with body mass index or BMI exceeding 27. According to Hyderabad-based gynecologist Dr. Bhage Lakshmi S., hormonal imbalances and genetic predispositions are major contributing factor to PCOS, but stress may also contribute to it. Medical experts say that stress plays a role in disrupting hormonal balances, potentially influencing the development of PCOS.
While the link between stress and PCOS is still being studied, some research suggests that an association is already there. Additionally, women with PCOS may also have a higher risk of developing stress disorders. Dr. Thridip Chaudhary, a consultant psychiatrist at a prominent Delhi hospital, emphasized the importance of addressing mental health issues in patients with PCOS. According to him, patients with PCOS are sometimes referred to mental health professionals and treating them requires multifaceted approaches. Incorporating mental health assessment into clinical evaluations and implementing interventions such as diet, exercise, cognitive behavioral therapy and lifestyle changes can be beneficial. The symptoms related to PCOS are long and acute, but thankfully there are plenty of options to manage the patients. According to Delhi-based obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Rashmi Balyan, management of PCOS symptoms and correction of underlying hormonal imbalances are the main goals of treatment. She said that main treatment options for PCOS in the young adolescent group include diet, exercise and oral contraceptives. Women of childbearing age, on the other hand, may be treated with oral cyclical high hormones along with exercise and diet adjustments. Also, it is important for women in their late 40s to be cautious as there may be risk for diabetes. Seeking advice from an endocrinologist and considering antibiotic medications may be important for this age group. Doctors say that while PCS is not curable, it can be effectively controlled at an early stage through early detection, timely assessment and appropriate treatment. They also stress that the treatment goals for PCOS focuses on reducing clinical hypoandronism, managing menstrual irregularities, preventing endometrial hyperplasia and cancer. First-line pharmacotherapy for PCOS often involves combined low-dose hormonal pills. These pills are effective in managing hyperandrogenism, regulate menstrual irregularities and reducing the risk of endometrial cancer. Additionally, the common diabetes drug metformin can be prescribed to decrease insulin resistance. In cases where hyperandrogenism persists despite hormonal pills, doctors may consider adding anti-androgens. For those pursuing pregnancy, ovulation induction can be achieved with medications such as clomiphene, citrate, letrozole and occasionally gonadotropins. Notably, Studies on newer glucose-lowering agents such as glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor analogs or GLP-1-RA have shown promising results in the treatment of obese women with PCOS. Clinicians say that these agents have demonstrated better outcomes than metformin in terms of weight reduction, increased menstrual frequency and improvement in hyperandrogenism and metabolic issues. Selective SGLT2 inhibitors such as empaglifogen and canagliflozin are drugs that play a crucial role in regulating glucose metabolism by lowering glucose levels through an insulin independent mechanism. They also help reduce hyperinsulinism and improve insulin sensitivity. Furthermore, newer drugs such as melatonin and lactoferrin have shown potential in improving ovulatory function in PCOS. With early detection and advancements in treatment, the quality of life for most patients can be significantly enhanced. That's all we have in this broadcast. Please continue watching the Prince YouTube channel for more. Thank you.